Hey guys, Terrence here with Paul and another episode of Let's Talk Reef. And we're in some place new. Yes. Yes. I know this place well, as do you. <laughs> this is uh, my office. We're doing a bunch of filming in the, uh, uh, the studio over there. So mm -hmm. Paul is doing a bunch of stuff over there. So we didn't want to upset everything that he had going on. So Much appreciated. Thank you. <laughs> we Thank set you. up in here. I was planning for it to go on in there. Um, had most of my stuff done, but uh, I think it's nice to be in here, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So. Representing Real Reef today. I see that. You know, it's got COVID hair still. It's not on the regular schedule like I should be. They're open out here, but... They are. You got to wear a mask during the whole thing, but uh, it's uh, it was nice. Yeah, no doubt. So it's hat day for me today. Shout out to the guys at Real Reef. Use their stuff, love their stuff. And uh, uh, I am a hat person. And so for any manufacturers out there that want me to wear a hat, <laughs> they, they, weren't, they weren't done. They sent me a box of hats. So yes. I have like... I have a uh, continuum of hats for the gardening all mm -hmm. the way to the brand new one that I put on today just for the show. Nice. So today, what are we doing, Paul? Today, we are going to be talking about um, the, the Randy's recent uh, video about heaters and an apex. Yes, we are. And uh, fortunately, unfortunately, Vincent was not uh, feeling well today. Mm. So I have to go old school with me driving the show again like before, but it's okay. I still remember how to do it. it, it you'll be fine. I hope so. Yeah, yeah. Anything else going on, Neptune Systems related? Um, well, first of all, I wanted to show this. This, ah. Look at this. Um, that's Ian Anderson when he was young. Ah. You see? Yeah. <laughs> For yeah, those of that. you that know, that. we were just listening to uh, little Jethro Tull right before we went live. Mm -hmm. and it, uh, When I saw this, this screenshot that I took of Randy, it reminded me of, uh, of a little Jethro Tull, so I thought it would be kind of funny to put it up. But anyway, we are talking about Mastering the Apex. It's a great new series. Uh, that is being done by BRS, uh, Randy's doing it, mm -hmm. uh, taking a look at all the different pieces of equipment on your reef mm -hmm. and seeing uh, you know, how you can make them better with the Apex and what you need to do to enhance them and make them better. So they're saying your audio is not working well there, Paul, so okay. is it low? or? Let me see what I can do about that. It seems like it's pretty good. It's hot. Yeah, yeah. Hello, can you hear me? Well, if you guys think cool. it's still bad, let us know. We'll know in a little bit. Yeah. So yeah. anyway, so we're going to basically, when we, when we watch these videos, what we said we were going to do the last time we were on is if it looked like we could fill in the blanks, you know, uh, add a few other tips and tricks, a right. couple of other things. Um, just says that you're quiet, so let me just crank you up just a little bit. It says you're muffled. It's probably because it's under your shirt, man. It's okay. No, I we can do it. We can. We can make it. We can overcome. I'm all good. All right. So anyway, so that's what we're gonna do. That's what we're gonna do today. Um, we're gonna talk about heaters. Um, there's a lot of controversy, mm -hmm. you know, out there about heaters and uh, how to set them up. Or who's in control? Uh, there's, you know, some recent video stuff from, from Ryan to kind of confuse things a little bit. Yeah, we'll talk about that and go through the different kind of, we, for a long time, right, you know, there we had one method of kind of recommending a heater and then um, BRS, which does so many great things, uh, you know, for the hobby and in terms of educating customers and things like that, had a different take on it, right? right. And so um, today we're going to kind of go through heaters and all that kind of stuff. Um, in terms of um, what they are, how to use them with an Apex. Well, let's watch Randy's intro just to kind of set it up so people will know you can go find this out on uh, YouTube, Randy's videos. And uh, hopefully maybe Randy will be able to come in on, you know, as a guest on one of these in the, uh, no, in the near future. Fun. Yeah. So we'll have him in on a window and, uh, you know, make fun of him, you know, somehow or another. I'm sure uh, we'll find ways. <laughs> All right, let's watch his intro. Oh, look, it's only got hey me guys, Randy side. here with the BRS Down TV here. guide to mastering your oh, Neptune Apex really. controller, picture picture, where we show you how to use the Apex game. to improve your equipment's performance and avoid a ton of inevitable issues that all of us reefers face. An overheated or underheated tank is one of the most talked about issues that reefers face because it's a silent killer that many times is difficult to tell just by looking at the tank where everything's going great until the moment that it's not. So that's kind of the intro. So he's, you know, he's going to be talking about some very basic things, um, and we're going to get to those in a minute. But I thought the best thing to start out with, because he didn't really get into it in his video, because they're supposed to be just mastering the Apex videos, mm -hmm. and they've got a whole bunch of heater videos that they've right. done. Mm -hmm. um, the, you know, from six years ago, I saw the day that they did one with the Apex, all the way up to the Worldwide Coral series, all the way up to some live streams that they've done. Mm -hmm. There's been all sorts of great information they've given on heaters. 
but I thought I'd want to give our take um, and, and set it up first uh, with the heaters that are available. And you guys out there, if you have questions, uh, look, see, Cody says I'm loud. So, yeah, I'm telling you guys, man, Terrence is loud, Paul is not. Huh. All right, maybe that'll make it better. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, the first heater up is the tried and true glass heater of our childhood. Um, now it's called the Eheim True Temp, okay. what they call it. Um, I've always known it as the Eheim heater. That my, that my Jaeger, it's the Eheim Jaeger, I think, the J. How do they say that? Yeah. Janssen, Mr. Janssen. <laughs> um, but, uh, but this heater's been around forever. It comes in sizes all the way up to, I don't know, three or 500 watts or mm -hmm. maybe even more. Um, they generally get longer. Yes. The, the, the more heat, the more heating element that they have. Um, most of the people out there probably right now is, are saying, oh, that's a you know, crappy heater and those old school heater because there's so many newer heaters available. Right. But it gets the job done. Yeah, I mean, it was the heater I started with, and it's and the heater I went away from, and now the heater I use again. You know, it, uh, don't spoil the surprise yet. Basically, right, it is um, uh, in terms of efficiency, right? You know, it, it's able. It just heats up this heating coil on the inside. There's a relay inside oh, of it. There, it's not. It's actually. It's it's actually a. Uh, it's a. It's a. It's a piece of what they call bimetal, mm -hmm. and it has a properties that it bends when the temperature changes ah. and so what happens is is that the contacts when it gets cold right they open up mm -hmm. or, or when it gets warm they open up when it gets cold they close back together right and that's really the the thing that's given this a bad rap mm -hmm. because every time those contacts open and close a little like arc happens right down there in between those two pieces it happens it like on your air conditioning too in yeah. your house that's it goes out and eventually, it just sticks together because it's like plasma, like molten metal, like right. where it's arcing together. Right, it goes back and forth, back and forth, right? But when it sticks together, your tank overheats. Mm -hmm. And that's what's given these a really, really bad rap. That's one thing. And the other thing is, is that the, um, you know, the, the hysteresis, as they call it, even though uh, our guy at Reef Automation over there, uh, Derek can't say the word hysteresis, uh, it, it, it means the plus or minus off of the set temp is not very good on this one. It's about a degree and a half, right? Uh, um, about so, that. Um, from, you know, if you set it to 77, it's going to go all the way down to 75 and a half, 75 and a half, and if it goes, if it can go all the way up to 78 and a half. And, um, so that, that can be a pretty wide range. And you have to set this little, th this little wheel on here to get it like calibrated mm -hmm. in. And, and so, it, you know, as a heater on its own, I would not use this heater as a heater on its own. Right. But we'll talk about more about this one in a little bit. Okay. So this is this is the Jaeger heater, and it's very economical too. Okay. Yeah. It's Super a... economical. I'm going to show you some prices here in a minute, Paul. Okay. And you're going to uh, you're not going to believe the difference in the prices. Okay. The second one that came up recently is these um, composite or plastic yeah. type heaters mm -hmm. that started coming up. I don't know, 15 years ago or so started to become more popular mm -hmm. um, because these obviously as i said they fail some people are afraid that the glass is going to break mm -hmm. this is obviously you know you can take a hammer to it as right. they say um i wouldn't recommend that for, for <laughs> obvious reasons i think there's actually a brs video where yes. they do that um but these generally work really well and they got a great thermostat yes it's been tested on brs as well um i think it's like plus or minus 0.1 when you see the graph on the apex it's just like it just perfectly it just holds steady, it, right? You know, and so it's a very accurate therm th thermostat, and it it heats up really quickly. It has good uh, transference of the heat that it generates. Um, so it's a great heater for a lot of reasons, but there are a couple reasons why you know I probably don't. I don't yeah, they've gotten a bad rap recently too because they have had some problems. It started actually with the Marineland heater, um, and I think I've got a couple of pictures in here that I can show. Uh, yeah. So basically here is the, you know, they recalled these heaters um, for having them. They were exploding. They were mm -hmm. burning up aquariums. They were causing all kinds of problems with the first plastic ones that kind of came out. And, th and that's kind of what first, first put in everyone's mind. It's not, uh, not necessarily the direction you want to go. But the cobalt neotherm heater um, kind of uh, was a revisit of that. They, they did it pretty well. Um, but they've had a couple of missteps yeah. over, over time. And some of these that have failed. One of the failures in particular was quite uh, quite a public one. I think I have it on here too. Uh, let's see. Stealth. Here it is. 
So this is actually a stealth heater that was in Joey, uh, King of DIY, mm -hmm. um, in his Stingray tank. Oh, man. And it exploded. The bottom blew right off of it, as you can see in that picture right here at the bottom. I mean, it makes sense, right? It's contracting, expanding, contracting, and this is this is plastic. You yeah. Know? So yeah, eventually, right? You you're going to expand and contract, and you get some small crack, and you, you do get... drop it. You do put a hammer to it, and you get little start to get a little imperfections in the plastic. And yep. Then you got bad news bears. The, the the big problem with this is, I mean, this if it goes in the water is bad, right? If it cracks and goes in the water, it's probably going to short throw your. Uh, but you're going to know that right away. You're going to know it. It's it. You know, if you uh, if you don't know it, you probably should pay more attention to your aquarium. Right. Um, but this this has some really nasty kinds of stuff in inside here, like a gel and stuff. It's the plastic. And that, that and that's what <laughs> that's what evidently killed all the stingrays for Joey on yeah. on his. So there is that downside of this, and they aren't cheap either, um, mm -hmm. for sure. Uh, so there's those. And then the third one that is very common that we don't have a sample here because nobody in the office uses these is, that's the wrong picture. Uh, <laughs> I've got a better picture than that. Here we go. Is the titanium heater, right? Tried and true. So there's a couple of different variations of this. There's some like this one which have the inline thermostats in them. Mm -hmm. And there's others where the, the heating element actually has a plug in it and it goes into their heater controller. And either way, right, there is some sort of uh, pro, right, mm -hmm. you know, in going into your water as a separate item. Um, either you go with the controller or one that's in line. Right. Um, they all have those uh, kind of rubber um, uh, stops at the end of them, I believe. Um, well, it's the, it's those stops and the seals on those stops yes. that really cause the problem. I can't get over to my other screen now. Oh, well. Anyway, um, and, and, and so those stops, again, they have an adhesive in them. Salt water likes to get wherever it wants to get to. Mm -hmm. It gets in and it shorts out, they blow out, you start to have problems in the tank. Um, you know, they can have issues as well. I mean, with all of these Terrence, right, you have basically where the electricity goes into the different heating elements, right? Whether that be on the neotherm, right. whether that be on this uh, glass Eheim, or whether that be on the uh, titanium heater. Yeah, right? absolutely. So basically, right, you know, all of these are going to fail at some point, right? That's just This one happened to fail right at the... Uh... At the thermostat, right, and and I've often had the thermostats go out before the th I've had the on the titanium heaters for me. It, it was never the the element that burned out. It was always something with the um, you know the therm the thermos the start thermostat, of course. right, and you know. Um, and so you get water intrusion into the elements, right? And then on the glass heaters too, right? You know, you, if you submerge them all the way, right? Then you, you know, at some point there's some sort of junction. Oh, water can get in. Water will get in eventually, eventually if you leave it uh, entirely submerged. So, you know, when looking at all of this, the heater that I run mm -hmm. in my tank is this one. Me too, man. Me too. And <laughs> this is the heater I run. It's. The reason why is because I run it on an Apex. And mm -hmm. We're going to talk about more about that in a little bit. Right. And I've run all three of these heaters, right? So um, the, the little Neotherm heater I ran on a uh, seven or eight gallon tank for a number of years. My Flaming Prong uh, Gobi Habitat had three of those in there. I love those little fish. Anyways, um, and I ran these one of the little these small Neotherms. And I think if you stay pretty small on these Neotherms, you're going to be okay. Okay. Right? When you go to the really large ones and, uh, you know, you get more right. plastic Right, 300 contact, watts, something yeah, like that. I don't know, man. And then uh, titanium heaters, like I said, I always have those controls. They have new ones at BRS that are supposed to be really good that come out of a company out of Germany. Um, you know, the... Uh, it's, it's, here's a question right now. Jason said, I thought you had a heat exchanger. I do have a heat exchanger, but guess what? I have these still in there as yeah. a backup. Mm -hmm. So if I have heat exchanger problems, I have these. So there you go, Jason. I know you're trying to catch me. <laughs> uh, but but I, I had a couple of, I had two titaniums and two of these. And now I have three of these, okay, and one titanium because my other titanium went out that yeah. I had. It's just the way it is. And, th mm -hmm. and then the deal is when you look at the prices, so if you think these are going to wear out or if you think that they're cheap, okay, uh, okay, fine. So get rid of them every two years. That's mm -hmm. one of the things Ryan was saying on his video, on his Worldwide World video, is just get rid of them. If you look at the price, a 300 watt heater in this, okay, costs just $32 for this version. It costs $140 in this version. No. Yes. Oh no, that's the titanium. Oh, no, yeah. oh, no. The no. Neotherm, yes, $140, okay? I know. And then the titanium one that I just showed you costs $130. 
So, no, so no sale. No sale. <laughs> yeah. So when it comes down to it, I'm sticking with these. Again, be careful not to let them go dry because that's when the glass can crack. Because if you let them go dry, they get super hot. Water comes back in. Any, thermal stress. any of these heating elements, right? Any of these heating elements, if they are on and they are out of water, um, you know, is going to. Uh, if it happens for too long, is going to be a bad day for you. Yeah, and uh, and and this is a good segue. We had a. Uh, comment over here let's where am i going here uh let's just saw here can we preach there it is so jason martin says can we just preach bigger is not better multiple smalls are always safer so that's the the so, next thing is that that's a preview wow yeah you just, <laughs> you just, you just you read ahead, ahead. Yeah. so absolutely that the idea with these heaters is not to put all your eggs in one giant basket of a thousand watt heater yeah. or a 700 watt heater it's not good it's not a good idea um, for a multitude of reasons, number one, the, the more wattage that you have on one outlet, you know, that's not good on the switching circuit to be mm -hmm. switching that off and on as much. But that's a, a less of a deal than you can just cook your tank that much faster. Right. And it's, it's, there, there's just so many reasons not to necessarily um, put it all, you know, if you need a thousand watts of heat for some reason, right? Right. I, the, I can't find any reason why you'd ever want to buy a thousand watt heater, right? Um, you know, if it, you're going that bad, you go inline. Yeah. If you go, you go with an in, one of those inline type heaters or what have you. If you got a ginormous tank, which some of these guys do, and, but the average aquarist is not that person. And it's not a matter of if; it's always a matter of when. So one of them, they, the likelihood that all of them will fail at the same time is not very high. Right. Right. And then, and then uh, thirdly, right, um, you can actually do a lot of power saving as a result of maybe maybe at some point you will need all three heaters. Right, right? but you, you but run you just one if you want. You probably don't need them all three all the time. And you can have the redundancy. The other thing is too, the redundancy of being able to have that other one available. Mm -hmm. um, you, you can ladder them up, which I think you're gonna show us a little bit later on yes. how to do that. I forgot my script over there, Paul. I know. Um, so when we go off onto the I, screen, I was, some one of us will have to get up and I go was, get our... <laughs> I, was, I was hoping for it, you know. So, <laughs> so I can follow along. I um, wonder if we have any other questions up here before we go on. Uh, somebody talked about a thousand watt heater. Definitely not. Um, two heaters, one at 76 and one at 78, yep. Um, and uh, not too many other questions. Uh, we'll be changing. Do, 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 do. Oh, so Ed A talks about he went to the new BRS titanium heater with the Apex. Um, you know, they those are supposed to be better. Yeah. So uh, I don't know about the controller. The Inkbird controller has been kind of off and on for some people. Some people I, swear I, by I, it. I think with any of those, right, you, um, at some point, even the ones that are working great will not work. Right. right? It's just a matter of, um, and I've used Rankos, I've used, you know, cheaper ones, I've used all different levels of those. And at some point they always have a problem. Right. You know. We do have one cynical person out here, Leon Burroughs, right? Leon says, I'm guessing that BRS will be the best heater for the stream. Absolutely not. <laughs> I just told you. For me, and I speak for Paul, I think too, this is our favorite heater to use for the reasons that we talked about. 30 bucks a piece, you can put a bunch of them and take it out, throw it in the garbage, give and it then, to your uncle. I, yeah, and, and then the, the other question we often get, Terrence, is well, how much heat do I need? Right. right. I think that's one thing we wanted to speak about as well. Absolutely. And it, were, it was kind of what we were talking about, the multiple heaters. Right. right. And, uh, you know, we were you and I were going back and forth on the episode. Well, how many watts per gallon would you recommend? This right? actually was a question that came up on the on Randy's YouTube video yeah. of somebody. Uh, and it went back and forth. If you guys go out and read the comments, you'll see my, my full response there. Um, but there is always a recommendation. There's a manufacturer's recommendation that you can use as a starting point. Mm -hmm. Some will say, what, two... Two watts a gallon. Two watts per gallon is three watts per gallon, you know, something yeah. like this. But what I mentioned in this in this comment is is that there's so many variables when it comes to to picking the right heater, and I think this is part of the reason why people pick too big sometimes. Absolutely, because they don't want to buy one that's too small. They have no idea, and so they just go, you know what? Especially on some of these heaters, like on the Jaeger heaters. Well, I mean, this it's 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 it's, it's twofold, right? You know, so you have the two hundred watt heater that's thirty four dollars, right? And then you can get the three hundred watt heater for thirty five dollars, exactly thirty seven dollars, right? That's exactly right? It. And it's like, so well, I'm just going to get the three hundred watt. Yeah, heater, why right? not? You know, and it, it, uh, it it's not necessarily the direction you want to go. So so really, the, the the variables that come into play. I mean, I'll give you my example from my house. 
my sump is under the house it can get as low as 45 degrees down there yep. okay it's not on the concrete floor but somebody may have theirs in the basement on the concrete floor mm -hmm. that makes a big difference yep. um you know depending on how much evaporation you have you know because of surface agitation and whatnot that cools your tank down the equipment that you have in the tank it's um, huge it's a big it, part of that big part so if you have a 150 watts uh, submersible uh, return pump that's 150 watts for the most part maybe minus a little bit that's going into the tank. And so, you know, you have to really look for your own needs to see kind of where where your tank is going to be under normal conditions. And you may only need a couple hundred watts to get you up to where you need to be. Right. However, if you happen to be in a super cold area, then you have to be careful because you need to have enough heating capacity available if should something happen when you're away from home. Right, right. You know, um, to your heating and air conditioning. Heating and air conditioning system. Um, and that's where the redundancy really comes in. Right. You do need all of it. Um, uh, it can be very powerful. And you know, it's it's you know whether you're running inline, whether you're in DC, whether you're in AC pumps, all of these have a tremendous effect about how much watt and heat. Yeah, is going power in, heads. How many pow How much power is going into your water? Yeah, even your power heads, even like you know gyre power heads mm -hmm. or our wave power heads or any kind of power head that you put in the tank that's 20 30 uh, watts right there a large amount of those that power stays in the tank that's yeah. it has to where and else that, would it go it's also how your sump is designed as well right mm -hmm. is it closed up um is uh do you have an open canopy do you have a closed canopy all the things these things are going to affect your you know what the overall temperature is going to the temperature input into the tank right and then not to mention ambient right so what you keep your what you keep your house at right so now once you have your heater and you have an apex there's a couple of different ways that you can plug these in right yes and so we get a lot of questions about this and a lot of questions about capacity um what's the capacity uh, you know for each thing first thing i'm going to pull, pull up before i uh, we go over that if i can find my cursor again uh is this where is it you'd think this stuff would be easier for me to pull up right it's been a while man we've gotten spoiled with that so. i know so this is like techie geeky stuff on electricity okay because your heaters are going to be in watts okay and the ratings on devices like power strips and of course the energy bars are all going to be in amps yes. not going to get into a big electrical engineering discussion if I wanted to do that, I'd pull Kurt in here because he would, he would happily be on camera to, to give that lecture. What about power factor, Terrence? <laughs> yes, what about the power factor? What about the power and factor? all of that. So we're going to keep it really simple, right, for you because you can see right here, amps is watts over volts, okay? So very simply, if you, uh, if you had something like a 750-watt heater, mm -hmm. okay, and, uh, you know... 150 watts. Do so they make 750 watts? I don't know. Okay, so 300 watts, Paul. There you go. Thank you. 300 watt heater, you. okay? Let's keep it true. <laughs> and you divide that by, you know, 115, yep. you're, you're going to get something less than 3 amps. Yes. So that's kind of... You don't have to get exact, but it kind of gets you in the realm you need to be in to and understand. Your, and your voltage is going to be somewhere between 100 and... 10 and 120. 120 that's why I said that. Divide by 115. Yeah, so yeah. that's pretty much... The easiest way for you to just get a roundabout idea of what it's going to take. Mm -hmm. Now, any of these devices, the maximum that all of them can pull, because it's kind of a uh, set in our code, mm -hmm. right, um, by the the authorities, is 15 amps. Well, that's how most electrical circuits are going to be wired. 15 right? to 20 amps. Yes. Exactly. So you have some 20 amp circuits in home residential, but it's. But they only allow devices like this to go up to 15 amps. Right. Okay. So. Whether it's only four outlets or it's an eight outlet unit, it can only do total 15 amps. Period. Right. So if you're running a tank, for instance, and you're running a, you know, a tank with, uh, uh, because you want redundancy mm -hmm. and you want to have, uh, you need two 300 watt heaters, so you put three 300 watt heaters on there. So you have one of them as kind of a backup, right? Because mm -hmm. you're going to be using two 300 watt heaters. If you were to do that and put this you know, on here, that would be half your total capacity right there just on this, this yes. whole thing, mm -hmm. okay? Because together they would be, you know, seven and a half or eight amps together. Yep. So you want to keep that in mind when you're putting any devices on energy bars to kind of match them up correctly to which one you're putting them on. Because you wouldn't want to then put those three and then put your four radions no. <laughs> on the same You know, and I always bar. use the analogy of, um, you know, how much power should you put on a power bar? It's rated for 15 amps absolutely, right? But how fast is your cargo? 
Um, I know you, you, it can go okay. <laughs> My car, well, let's say, goes 120 miles per hour. I, I, uh, I dare I, you? I would, I would never drive that car right. 120 miles per hour. Right. right. Um, it would uh, be, a, be a bumpy road. Or not. if I did, it wouldn't be for very long. You don't want to risk it. You don't want to get up near the, the hairy edge of, uh, you know, of the, 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 the current, current, the max yes. current on the device. Um, so that's important to understand when you're putting, you know, heaters on something. Um, on this particular one, each one is how many amps, Paul? Seven. Seven amps. Mm -hmm. So, you know, effectively, you're, you know, you're going to put at most maybe what 600 watt heater on here if there was such a thing 500 watt heater yeah the most you'd want to do on any of these because an 800 watt heater would put you right at, right it on the put, edge put you right on the cusp and you again you don't want to you don't want to go all the way to the max right, right. You always want to be a little bit under what the max is because there's things like inrush current and all sorts of different things but that we normal, don't know about because we're not electrical engineers the normal current. running is seven amps right and um uh, you wouldn't necessarily want to put anything bigger than 500 as you said um, right. You know, but then we also have a couple different options as well. The, the only thing about this is, this is the only one that does power monitoring. Yep, you get power monitoring on this, and this only works with the newer Apex, yes. right? The newest Apex, I Apex say. L and Apex. Correct. Okay, and then we have our our classic Energy Bar 8. Which um, is still available, and you can still use, and it's still got a lot of uses, uh, you know, in modern aquariums where you don't necessarily need all of the energy bars, extra yeah. one links and DC 24s, and you just want to control some outlets. Mm -hmm. And it has uh, two relay outlets that, um, well, there's two different types of outlets. There's triac outlets on, out, on these six outlets, and there's mechanical relay outlets on these two outlets. These are rated for five amps each, and these are rated for um, 10 amps. A heater, you would want to plug into outlet four and eight. Yeah, and right. these have relays, mm -hmm. and these these basically are solid state control. Those are for soft starts, right? For Correct. Pumps, for pumps and things like that. So you could use the Energy Bar Eight. And so some of these are available on the you know on the secondary market now. Just yeah. People are selling off their equipment from previous generations of Apex, right? And now if you have something really big that you want to control, and you don't want to waste outlets, because by the way, this is a you know this costs you about one hundred and sixty dollars. So this is about twenty dollars an outlet. Okay. This has much more features. So this ends up costing you, it's what, 280 divided by eight, what is that, eight, do, $45? Yeah, yeah. It's like $45 an outlet for this one, okay? But you get other stuff, okay? Then we have our Energy Bar 4. The yep. Energy Bar 4 has four outlets on it, but it has one uh, in each, and has one heavy duty outlet, Right. okay? That heavy duty outlet is rated for 12 amps, mm -hmm. okay? Um, so you could run a 10 amp device on that and be just fine. Right, that's uh, for your chillers, yeah. um, for your really big heaters and things like that. And then it has three eight amp uh, outlets on it. So this is how you don't waste outlets because you know you you're actually getting the value as one hundred and twenty dollars right for four outlets is thirty dollars an outlet, mm -hmm. um, and you can run those two or three big devices on there. And even if you didn't use the other two outlets, it's worthwhile. Right, um, and all of these are mechanical relays. So. Oh, look, you're telling me to take the formula off the screen. Thank you. I don't have a producer oh my today. God. I know. It's just too much. All I know. Right. So here is the, the relay. That's, Hopefully you saw the end. Efren, I just wanted to let you know. I, went to, I put it there specifically for you to look at for a long time, buddy. Okay? So you can study it. Okay? Oh, wow. <laughs> um, so, yeah. Um, so you could basically, you have a couple different mechanical relay outlets there that you, could, that you have options to to basically do multiple heaters. Okay. Right, and and as you said, this is the only one that has your your power monitoring feature on it. Okay, mm -hmm. so now that we know what the devices are, we know what the heaters are, okay, there are two philosophies for controlling a heater yep. that, have, uh, that have always been there, but there's only one that we really kind of sanctioned with the Apex by way of uh, tasks mm -hmm. and easy to, easy to set up uh, uh, wizards. So the first way is that the apex controls the temperature so you set the temperature in the apex and that's what your tank temperature is going to stay at mm -hmm. and then you set your heater a couple of degrees higher than that as mm -hmm. a backstop yes okay so the positives of that are that you can get a there's a few finer control obviously than most of the heaters as i said this is like one degree plus or minus mm -hmm. we'll talk about where you should set it on your apex in a little bit um, but you get a finer control of that with a new energy bar, you get power monitoring on that, mm -hmm. which is... You get a more functional power monitor. You get more functional yes. power monitor, mm -hmm. yes. And, uh, it, you know, and you basically have a situation where 
the only thing that can really go wrong is if you had a problem with your Apex uh, you know, programming or you turned the outlet on and for whatever reason that heater had not been tested or checked or what have you and or had not been set correctly for the temperature, maybe it was set to 95 or whatever, that's the only way it would fail really in that scenario. Right, so you would have to have, to, to have a complete failure, two different things would have to happen. Right. One thing, the apex, for some reason or another, would not do what it's supposed to, okay? Mm -hmm. um, and it would not do what it's supposed to because, um, you know, the temperature probe came out of the water. Right. right? Um, it, it's not because of, you know, some sort of, um, uh, e, an aquabus cable gets disconnected from the EB-832. Okay. Right? Um, that would be why an apex would not be controlling a heater appropriately in terms of turning that outlet on and off at the set temperature. Right. Right. Um, and then the other thing that would have to happen for you to have critical. But some failure, of those, like if it got disconnected, it would just go to set off, right? Well, no, right, well um, you right, right. It would go you could, based on your fallback state, right? Okay. Um, my recommendation. Most would, tanks, by the way, don't die because they get cold. They die because they get hot. Right. So you know, having your heater go off. I just want to interject. There is is the best approach always. And I mean, I've had tanks that go down to 73 degrees and, you know, yeah, the fish took a week to come back <laughs> around. Well, maybe they got a little cold, <laughs> right? But a little bit of ick on them. But the other thing that has to go wrong uh, if, for, an out for example, an outlet stays on, right, is mm -hmm. um, the internal thermostat in the heater would also have to fail. But you have to remember um, that the likelihood of that happening is very less because you haven't been turning it off and on. You've been turning that heater off and on. With yeah. The, so uh, this is with the, with the heater control. This is a very this is the most important point. Thank you for bringing it up, Paul. Is that this is why this heater works really well in this configuration because its big Achilles heel is that bimetal thermostat in there, mm -hmm. which only really goes bad because it's cycling so many times. Yep. But with its temperature set two degrees higher, right, mm -hmm. it always stays closed. And therefore, it's not arcing on and off, on and off, on and off. And it's not, you know, having that, that chance to get, you know, stuck closed. Mm -hmm. So when it does, you know, get cold and need to come on, it can open up when it's right. supposed to. And the other thing to mention is the fallback, right? There are two different schools of thoughts of how you should do that if you are running, you know, uh, in a heater on the apex, mm -hmm. right? One is fallback off. Right, I would definitely run fallback off here in California because the likelihood that it's really going to get that cold outside is not that high. Right now, if I'm in Minnesota, right, and it is the middle of winter, right, I might choose one or two of my heaters to be fallback on. Maybe not all of them, right, but one or two of them to be fallback on. This so is then the, you could do this if you if you knew that it took more than one heater to keep your tank to the optimal temperature well, that you like. That's what you also have to understand though, Terrence, is the um, the uh, the internal thermostat on the heater should be taking over in that situation as well. Sure. Right, you know, so you set the heater to 78, for example, right? Um, it's uh, it's fall back on. The that's heater's right. gonna turn off at 78. So you only have a problem really is if, if this is stuck. If both things go wrong. Are, both and things the likelihood of that, sure it could happen, but right. it's not likely to happen. Right, right. You know? Okay, so that's one way, and uh, you know, perfect segue here. Patricia said, "I have my heater as the default, and the apex is the back off, backup to cut off my power." Are you suggesting the opposite? Well, let's so, see. so we're going to talk about that. Let me just give you one piece of info. So let's see if I can find. There was a uh, a video. I guess I can't find it right now. You'll find it. It's a good video. It's, it's oh, here it is. It's not. I'm not watching the whole video. It's just. Uh, so basically on this video, you can go find out there, it's it's the WWC video that uh, Ryan and Randy did where they're looking at the hybrid method of BRS and WWC. Ryan, uh, in this particular episode, talked about the heater strategy to keep things stable um, and you know keep the tank temperature and safe and everything. And I think this is one of the places where this um, kind of unfortunate situation occurred, which is in the interest of uh, trying to protect what I would consider to be the most expensive piece of equipment. The energy bar. Yes, the energy bar. And, uh, and also put the ultimate faith in the apex as the, the backstop. Mm -hmm. Ryan basically said that he prefers to set it up the other way. Now, there's a little bit more history here, right? which is Ryan himself had run a tank where he had set the hysteresis, the plus or minus on the temperature thing, to 0.1 degrees. Mm -hmm. uh, and so the apex was basically turning on and off that heater 
right? Very frequently. Very frequently, maybe 1,500 times during the day, okay? Because every minute, you know, it goes up, it goes down, goes up, goes down, goes I, up, I, I goes no down, goes that. up, goes I down. No and there's frequency. probably not a, um, a, you know, a defer in there and uh, et cetera. And so that is one of the problems that occurred to him and, and helped lead him to this conclusion mm -hmm. that he then let everybody know because, about. Because, I mean, you understand a mechanical relay, it also has kind of a, a switch. Correct. Right? I think that switch is up, down, up, down, up, down. And that does have a certain number of duty cycles. Right. And those duty cycles, the number of duty cycles on there, without getting too deep into the weeds, is is also limited, uh, or I guess uh, uh, it's governed by the current that you're also switching. So the higher the current that you have, combined with the number of switching cycles you have, leads to sooner failure, right? Yeah. And so he created a situation where that could likely happen more often, but the most common customer situation where they have a common heater size and a correct uh, you know, uh, plus or minus value that we're gonna show in a minute, the likelihood of that having a problem on your apex is far less, and it certainly doesn't outweigh all the benefits that we just talked about yeah. of running it that way. It's I mean, you would the number of you would have to turn it off on and off an unbelievable amount of times to get mm -hmm. it, right. And um, so in Ryan's situation, he um, did that an unbelievable amount of times. Correct. Right. Um, and so that's what kind of gave the foundation for him to recommend as the leave the apex outlet always on and then use the in, the heater's internal thermostat control. Correct. Right. The reverse. Where we are recommending have the apex turn the outlet on and off, and then the heater thermostat is in the background. Which both work. They yes. bur both work great. They both have some pluses and minuses. It's our opinion here at Neptune Systems that. The, the benefits of setting it up the way that we recommend, which is that the apex controls the temperature and your heater's thermostat be the backstop, has a slight advantage over doing it the other way. Mm -hmm. um, we had a, a long discussion about this a couple of times, Randy first, um, then Randy I'm sure had with Ryan, and then I had with Ryan, and then eventually it's... they went back and they went back and forth, and ultimately Ryan, or sorry, Randy in his video went to talking about, uh, oh look at this, we got, you guys got super chat. Can you believe this? Got super chat. Um, thank you there, uh, Derek. Anyway, so the, ultimately Ryan, or sorry, Randy decided that the best way to do it is to follow our recommendation and use the the tasks that we have for setting up the heater. Um, yes. So, uh, sorry, I got I got distracted by uh, Derek, Derek, <laughs> getting ten dollars for your coffee. Yeah, I was like, huh? That's coffee uh, money, buddy. Um, <laughs> uh, Yes. So basically, right, when BRS came out with that video and that recommendation, right, we were all kind of like, hmm, all right, let's let's see how this goes. And there's been a, and you know, and we've people kind just of, we've ran kind of, with it, though. That's we've, the... we've kept recommending the way that we've always recommended it. Right. Um, and um, it, it's good to have a conformity on this again. Right. Yeah, so uh, we're, uh, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah, it's it, it, it's definitely I'm happy he did his video the way he did. So let's go let's go over it. Um, okay. You know he did it in the video. Let's do it one more. Oh, you need me to to come in here and figure out. Okay, you got to take it off and put it in again. Take, Is it unplug there? it. No, I don't see it. It's not there. It's Paul's uh, Paul's iPad technical difficulties. Vincent, we miss you, man. There we go. There we go. It's coming in. Do, 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 do you have to do anything here? No, oh, there we go. There. Oh, yes. Now I can go in and boom and boom. Yeah, there we are. Look at All that. Right. Oh, my gosh, so, it worked. Setting up heater control on an Apex is very easy. Okay. All right. Um, you're going to be amazed of where we go first, Terrence. Where do you think that's going to be? <laughs> A task menu, man. Yes, we're going to go hit the task, which is the clipboard right next to the gear button. Okay. And then we are going to search in the word, let's just search in the word temperature. All right, so let's just search in temperature and see what we get. Okay. Um, not kill it. Um, so we have several different things that reference um, temperature in the Apex, right? One is the temperature probe, one is alarms for your probe, um, turning off a light when the tank gets too warm. Right. Um, and then we have your heater and chiller, right? So we'll still go ahead and select on heater, okay? Um, and hit next. We choose the outlet uh, that we're going to use or in this situation. I guess what I'm going to use outlet number four, which is where my heater is. Okay. Okay. And it's named heater. And then I have several different temperature probes in my system. Okay. By the way, uh, if I can stop you for a second, yeah. when you buy an Apex, for those of you who might be watching, we haven't bought an Apex yet, this is already pre-configured for you. So you don't oh, even yeah. have to run this. 
It's already pre-configured for 78 and 79. Outlet number four. Outlet four, mm -hmm. and you're good to go. So uh, we've done a lot of this stuff for you ahead of time. All right, Paul, go so, ahead. So um, I have temperature both, uh, I have a temperature probe down in my sump, and I have a temperature probe um, up in my tank. And Randy right? mentioned that, by the way, in the video, too, mm -hmm. as a great idea, because you can see differential if, mm -hmm. if your pump, if your return pump were to stop, you mm -hmm. can kind of know just from your temperature probes. And I control based on the temperature up in my tank. Okay. okay? Um, so I'm going to select that, okay, and then I can set the um, the temperature I want. Now I like to keep a cooler tank, right? And I like to keep a cooler tank for a lot of different reasons. Um, biggest reason is uh, dissolved oxygen content goes much higher um, mm -hmm. at, at cooler temperatures. You have a small tank too, and so that yeah, matters. Yeah, so it does matter. Um, so I run my tank at about 76 and a half. Um, I want my heater to turn on at 76, and then I like to have my heater turn off at about 76.7. So that means that your your tank on average will go up or down about 0.35. Yep, exactly. So okay. when it gets down to 75.9, the heater kicks on. When it gets above 76.7, so 76.8, the mm -hmm. heater turns off, right? Perfect. Um, and I hit next, and that's exactly what it's going to do. Um, and then you hit send, okay? And it sends it off to the apex, all right? Um, and then, you know, I can do other things as well, right? Um, I can put a um, reference my other temperature probe in there if I wanted to, you know. Okay, how do we do that? So in that situation, I'm just going to go to... Derek's the... like, he's like, 20 minutes, I got to go watch the debate. Really? We're not better than the, the debate? Seriously? I thought it was, I thought it was a little later than that. Was it? I don't know. I don't know. He's in Arizona where they don't have daylight savings, so yeah, who knows? Yeah. So um, I also uh, turn my heater off in the example of... Um, uh, if I run run a maintenance mode, mm -hmm. right? So when there's no circulation in my tank, I don't want to be heating that sump up, okay. right? Um, we're down where my heater is. And then I also like to add another backstop, right? Is if um, sump temp, sorry, sump temp is, is less than, uh, I'm sorry, is greater than. Um, so you're not overheating your sump, basically, is what you're trying to prevent mm -hmm. here. If, I, if for some reason, right, that the... Uh, you're no not in a feed mode, but there's maybe your pump mm -hmm. had a problem or what have you. It's not just going to keep cooking mm -hmm. the, the sump. Yep, then it, I also turn it off in that situation as well. Okay, um, so that's pretty much how I, how I run my heater. Right. Um, but I have a fairly, fairly small tank. Um, I only have a 50-watt heater in a 40-gallon tank. Um, the uh, being in the office and all, you know, the temperature here is pretty much always constant. Mm -hmm. um, so there's not a lot of reason for me to run a lot of heat here in California, right? Um, but um, the, we, Terrence and I talked about separating the heat up. Right. Right. And this is a, a great idea because um, not only are you putting all your eggs into one, not putting your all your eggs into one basket. If you necessarily need, if you need 200 watts of heat on a 100 gallon aquarium, mm -hmm. for example. Just get 200 watt heaters. Okay? okay. And on one of those heaters, you know, turn it on so the, um, you know, so the, uh, so it runs it exactly the way I wanted it to. But the other heater, set a degree or two lower, right? So set that other heater. Well, your cycle time is going to, you're going to have less cycles as well because it'll mm -hmm. take it longer to heat up to mm -hmm. get up to your set point. Yep. And, and uh, it, you know, you'll basically stay in that zone a lot longer too. So for example, if I was in a cooler environment and it was cool in the house and that other heater had to kick on, maybe I kick on that other heater at, you know, 75.8, right? Another two mm -hmm. degrees lower, right? right? So 0.2 degrees lower. And so now if for some reason that first heater's running, but that water temperature is still falling, right? Then right. The other heater is going to turn on and then I have that 200 watts of heat. And they both go up to the to this temperature. It's a good point. And then it turns off. Yeah, know? yeah. It's the idea of laddering yeah, yeah. Um, your heaters. Mm -hmm. You know, and you could do that with three heaters. You know, that's or, kind of a three hundred level thing, though, right? Because you got to get into code and stuff. It's not there's not a task. Uh, for there's that, not right? a task for that, right? But it's basically, um, you know, you would have your one heater. Look at you this, know? Randy's like. Check out the last five minutes of my uh, of my Master Your Apex video. I walk you through it. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and then you just go um, into, um, and then you just pick another energy bar out. Uh -huh. All right. Run the task again on the uh, on the other energy bar and on the other outlet. Right. And you just put the on temperature um, a tenth of a degree lower. Okay. Right? On the second. Yeah, yeah on, on the second, second one. Yeah. On the second one. Um, there's some geeky things you could do as well, um, like creating one master outlet, you know, a virtual outlet. That's what I do for all of mine. Yes. I have a master heat outlet that I have so mm -hmm. that 
that that's when you want to change the temperature. You, I think we did this in a live stream before, mm -hmm, yes. where you only have to change that temperature in one place and mm -hmm. not in all of your individual heaters for yeah. sure. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, th that's fairly easy to do as well. Right. right. The other really um, valuable thing to do is to make sure that, um, you know, if you do want to keep a really small range, and I don't much recommend a range much less than like point four to point five degrees. Right. Right. There's really not not much of a discernible difference between seventy six and seventy six and a half. Again, if you're right? it also if you're you know, if your heater is well matched to your tank, mm -hmm. the time it takes to get between you know seventy four point five up or sorry, seventy five point five to seventy six, let's say, mm -hmm. okay, is going to be nice and gradual, right, to get there and take, you know, time mm -hmm. to get there. And therefore you'll have less cycles. And, and you brought up a great point is this whole oversized heater trend that happens, right? Mm -hmm. of, I'm going to get a 500 watt heater for a 100 gallon tank. Okay, what happens in that situation is your water is going to get uh, hot so quickly. Right. That is going to be hard on your tank. Yeah. Right? Because you're changing temperature at a very fast rate. Right. Right. And then it falls down again. And then it, it, it's going to overshoot, number one. For sure. And then number two, right, it's going to fall back down again and then just go right back up. You know, um, it's really good to have these nice gradual up and downs. Um, you know, in the winter, my te my temperature cycles three times a night. Mm -hmm. You know, so it goes down, up, down. It's up, an important it thing. So why don't you do this for some of the people that don't know? Show people in the outlet where they can track that, what they have to select in that outlet to make sure that you can see how many cycles you are getting. Absolutely. So um, we're going to go to the heater outlet here. Okay. And then there is this option here called um, down in the bottom corner that's called log enable. Mm -hmm. Okay, you de you select or deselect that, you send it off, and then as a result of that, I don't my heater may probably hasn't turned on in a while, Terrence, but we'll see here. Well, you can slide okay. the slider back. So now I'm going to take the temperature and, um, and overlay, and then overlay the um, the heater outlet. And there, my heater turned on one. There you time. go. <laughs> okay. And so right here, you can see where my heater turned on. Um, I wonder why it turned on there. Oh, it went really low there. I can see. The reason why it turned on there the is my is the no. The reason why it turned on there is that is where um, the thermostat for my office is in the lobby. Uh huh. Uh huh. And somebody was moving a bunch of things in for a long for a little while one day. Oh, and it got really hot. It got so really they kicked hard on in that the lobby the AC and then kicks on my AC and then so it brings the. The, the right. office down really cold. John Walker says, yes, we typically use two small heaters and stage them using a defer. Yeah. That's exactly what I would do too, John. That's exactly. That's a great option. So, okay, so now the fail safes that Randy talked about, one of them um, was I'm obviously... I'm not sure I understand. I don't understand either. She just, she just sometimes <laughs> has things to say. You know? uh, so Randy did on power monitoring. Okay. So let's show that again. I know we've showed, we kind of beat a dead horse here on power monitoring all the time. We're doing but, that because I, it uh, is, in my opinion, it's one of the most underused um, uh, features in the EV-832. Mm -hmm. And it is by far the, for me, you know, um, I've been using Neptune Systems products for a number of years as you. Um, the thing that I was most excited about in the new Apex was this power. Power monitoring, monitoring is you great, know, and it's it's so powerful and uh, like, and as a uh, as evidence, okay, that not enough people know how to to make it work, is Derek from Reef Automation. The other day when I was showing him how it all worked, so he could do his videos, mm -hmm. he was like, "I had no idea this worked like this. This is awesome." And oh, this yeah. is it's, Derek from Reef Automation. It's it's a, it's a it's a great feature, and so we just go to the task for power usage alarm. Uh, we're going to select my heater, okay? And it has, and the reason why it's re recommending such weird things right now is because it's turned on one time in probably right. the last month, right? Okay, but if you actually have something that runs cycles, right, um, you can put on power monitor. Well, the first time you pull this up, it's going to tell you, look, you need to get 24 hours of, of, of normal of normal run time in order for us to to basically understand what should be done. And so my heater is a 50 watt heater. It actually only runs about 40 watts or so. So for some reason, it was at 39, and if it was on and uh, if it was, if the outlet was on and it was not pulling 39 watts, I would get an alarm. So this is when your heater that. just kind of pooped out, right? Yep. Just mm -hmm. completely. So that what would be happening there, Air Terrence, is essentially right. It, the internal thermostat on the heater coil itself um, is now sensing a much warmer temperature mm -hmm. than the reality. Right. Okay. I'm not sure if that means it's open or closed. It probably it's means open. it's open, mm -hmm. right? But um, uh, one 
quick fix for that would be to turn that internal thermostat up a little bit mm -hmm. more. You'd probably get it on and then the apex is there and then just know that you need to order a new heater. Um, another uh, great example, and, and then um, another um, thing is if for some reason the heater is pulling wattage, right, um, and the outlet's supposed to be off, right? That could indicate right. that rare condition of the outlet being, being stuck, stuck on. on. Well, there is a question people are kind of asking in general. Um, I think it's about uh, negatives. This is a good one from John Gordon. Uh, negatives of having a log enabled on all the outlets. Um, I, well, you could probably make an enemy in the engineering department. That's probably one big negative. Yes. Uh, so, uh, yeah. I'll, 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 Go ahead. so what I will say here is um, only log the outlets that need to be logged. Okay, Outlets that need to be logged for me are ATM. Outlets that need to be logged for me are the heater. You know, outlets that need to be locked from here is the return pump, right? These sorts of things that don't necessarily have a lot of on-off duty cycles are really great to do. What doesn't need to be logged is a variable speed pump that changes through, you know, 30 different profiles in an hour. Yeah. Right? Um, and changes different speeds all the time. Or a outlet that's turning on every five seconds once every minute, at once every hour. So it's a resource thing. So uh, Derek actually answered the question here too. Uh, all of this data is stored in the cloud. Um, for anybody that wants to do just quick math, just think about how many things you have that are connected to your Apex. And if they turn, every time they turned off or on, Okay, it sent that data up there all day long for 365 days a year and think about how much data that would be and then it has to be referenced and it has to all of these things that have to happen and there's a cost to that right we have cloud services that we have to pay for and uh, and our goal is to keep Apex Fusion a zero cost service forever mm -hmm. forever so that means you can help us do that by not having things logged that shouldn't be logged. And I feel I feel like I just need to. It's I, I, whenever I see those threads of when are they going to start charging for Apex Fusion? Right. Uh, th that's not even a, a sentence that we ever even ask ourselves here. You know, it's a, it's just part. And of it's it. a lot of data. It's a lot of. It's data. a lot of data, um, for sure. Uh, always on. My outlet logs are all on. Well, thank you, Philly. Thank you, Philly. Really <laughs> thank that. you for that after the little discussion. Um, okay, so power monitoring. We know how the power monitoring works on there. There's one last little thing, and then we're going to call it a, a day, Paul, mm -hmm. um, that I'm just going to put a bug in people's ear, and you can show a little bit of this on the screen here, which is the, we waste a lot of energy on our aquariums. Absolutely. And it's hard to know sometimes when you're wasting energy. Um, if there is no way to really tell. Now, there's two sides of this. Some people really want to live their lives and not know <laughs> mm -hmm. because it allows them to still have an aquarium and, and not know how many hundreds of dollars they spend. Mm -hmm. But in the case of a heater, if your, uh, if your environment with your uh, pumps and everything else that you're running on your tank in your normal house environment, uh, it has a certain temperature that it runs at with no heater in it at all. Mm -hmm. Right, just because of that, and it may be seventy four, maybe seventy five, whatever it may be. Whatever you want to do above that is what you're paying for, and in the winter time, for instance, it may be a lot more to get it to seventy nine than it is to get to seventy six or seventy seven. Yep. And when choosing what temperature you want to put your tank at, you know you had a reason to keep it at say seventy six because of oxygen, but there's not a whole lot of reason unless you're breeding fish and doing other things to need to have you know a super warm tank at right. the other end so you can use the apex with power monitoring to actually see exactly what it costs you to run your tank let's say for one day at 78 degrees and then the next day run it at 76 degrees and see the difference in cost that it would be to you and so um you know when you click on the energy bar outlet, right, you're going to get all sorts of information, right? You get the, you know, the breakdown of what each uh, device is consuming at that time. You have, get the breakdown of a graphical display of that, and then you get the watts that's consumed in the day. However, if you hit the little gear up in the top right-hand corner, right, you're going to get a um, graph of the power consumption. Okay, mm -hmm. and if you wanted to run, is that for my whole aquarium? That is, this is, uh, I believe, the entire aquarium. Right, absolutely. So if you wanted to necessarily find out, you know, what's the cost difference, you would run one day your normal temperature of 78, mm -hmm. and then you um, bring it down to 77. And it's not going to be hard on the fish to go to 77. No, 77. not at all. Even going down to 76 isn't going to matter. No. 
And then what you can do here on the graph, right, you can go all, right, where this is all time. And right. then you can go one day, okay? And then now this is a 24 hour period, right? So I could go here and then I just basically go back to, to, the, to, the, to, the, to the day before mm -hmm. or what have you where exactly. I made the changes and then look down below, right? Mm -hmm. And you'll see what the usage is, what the cost is um, for uh, running on that day. Um, there you go. Yep, that's basically it. So and you can do that for lots of different things on your tank. I run my UV not full time um, and I can see the cost difference. It worked out to about $20 a month uh, here in California. Uh, it's just a great tool in the Apex that a lot of people aren't using. And, uh, you know, I'd like to hear more about it from you guys if you want to give us some feedback on using the power monitoring and the power costing features that we have in the Apex. So one thing we didn't mention was up here you can put in the cost per kilowatt hour. Okay. Right, that's so where it gets the dollar amounts. Up in California, um, we, we pay for our power. Um, I'm not. It's never really clear to me exactly how much they I pay. really obfuscate they, how much it, it is costs. So, it is, at this point, I have generational credit, and then I have I I, I don't even understand. I, I can tell you, it's at least twenty eight cents a kilowatt hour. Okay, okay, that's twenty two <laughs> cents um, here. But um, yeah, I think I saw. I think when Derek was doing his live stream, I think he pays. Something like eight cents. I don't even want to know. People tell me from all around the country, and it just, it, just, it kills me. Uh, it totally kills me. But I think that's let's about it, Paul. We, let's go full screen here. Yeah. Paul's right. Are there any other uh, questions uh, that you saw coming through, Terrence? Uh, uh, let's see here. I don't think so. There's a lot of commenting going on. A lot of people very engaged. I like that. You okay. know, I think, I think there was some confusion to, I think I saw something of, you know, well, what's the watts per, what's the watts per gallon, right? What do you guys recommend for watts per gallon? And the manufacturer is the use, way to go. Use the manufacturer's recommendation, but take into consideration how much wattage is inside the tank. Right. Look at your power heads, look at your return pumps, look at all of those things that are adding wattage in your, and then add that in to the heater power that you have. Yeah. It's not going to be a one-to-one -one comparison, mind you. Right. right. And then you need to understand of, well, how cool or how warm do I keep my house? Yeah. Right. If you keep your house fairly cool in the winter to, you know, and you keep the house at 68, right, you're going to need more heating as a result right. of that. But if you keep your house at 72 and you have. A yeah. Gallon you've of only got to go up four or five degrees. You, don't need to do much. you probably not going to need to do much. Yeah. All right. Well, I don't know. If there's any more real questions here from you guys. So, uh, Let's see here, three to five watts per gallon. You know, I, I don't I think, just... I, I, I think it's so many variables in this, where you live in the country, all of these things, I don't think it, 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 you really can boil it down to that. Yeah, and three to five watts a gallon, I mean, that's a that's So Lucas, what about what Lucas is saying here? We'll finish up on this one. You guys should mention the code if output name watts, then off, very powerful. So the um, you can turn on and off outlets as a result of um, as a result of what the current wattage is on a heater, for example, mm -hmm. right? So if, for example, the heater was running um, some un, uh, an ungodly amount of power, mm -hmm. right? So your hundred watt heater is now running, you know, more than one hundred and fifty watts. Right. Something's wrong there. Right. Okay? Right. So it's either um, a uh, the power sensing is not right, or the heater is literally probably shorting to the water column. Right. Right. Okay? Right. Um, and in that situation, right, you can um, turn off the outlet, right, using if. Um, so basically, it's like self destruct. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right? Mm hmm. If. What was it? You're looking for his comments? <laughs> you yeah. can know the syntax? I don't remember it either. Yeah. It's okay, Paul. They'll look it up. They're, they're, they're good uh, control freaks out there, they'll help each other out with the exact syntax. Uh, and Randy makes one last good point before we let you go, which is Randy says your home is the ultimate heater control. The heater is the fine tuning. Great way to put it. Uh, you know, we'll leave on that. And hopefully this was a helpful, you know, live stream for you guys. Talk a little bit more about heaters. Um, I encourage you guys to watch those BRS videos, uh, Master Your Apex series from Randy. He's putting a lot of time and effort into them. Mm -hmm. They're really good. Um, you get a lot of content in just a few minutes. And, uh, you know, put the questions out there on his, on his videos. I'm out there answering questions all the time on those videos. Mm -hmm. And uh, join us for another episode in two weeks. Yeah, we'll be here. We'll see what Randy brings to the table. Yes, we will. And who knows, maybe we'll have an announcement by six, about six more free agents by then. Huh? Who knows? Maybe. I'm going to tease it. For those people that are here late, I'm going to tease it, you know.
for all the, the doubters out there. All right. All right. See you all right. Guys. Take care, guys. Thanks for being, uh, you know, coming out here. And uh, I guess go watch the, the debate. It's going to be fun, I guess. I don't know. Started, uh, until next time, enjoy those fish, and we'll see you then. Thanks, guys.